Now it seems hard to believe that coming out would be a difficult process here in 2013 when the love that used to dare not speak its name seems now to never shut up. But in the 1960s, it was different. Today we speak with filmmaker and director Phil Siegel about a new work coming out in the 1960s. Hey, Phil. Hi, David. How are you? So now, of course, neither of us are old enough to remember the 1960s, but if we were, yeah. tell me, what was it like and what's your film about? Um, this is the second of a series of four films um, that takes modern gay and lesbian history and puts it into context into social movements. The 60s was all about Vietnam, the women's movement, uh, civil rights, and how the, the young gay people who had just come out in the 50s and discovered they were gay kind of organized and create and used the other social movements that were happening at the time that brought us to ultimately Stonewall and that's where the film ends and that where that's where the next one will pick up. Yeah, well I mean I was 8 years old when Stonewall happened and I remember hearing about it on TV and even at 8 years old going, hmm, there's something about this that interests me. I'm not not sure what it is, but I knew enough not to ask my mother and grandmother, what's going on up there in the streets of New York? I was 11 at the time, and I, <laughs> and I agree 100%. Yeah. yeah. But we knew something was going on. I mean, when I was a kid, you know, my brother went to serve in the Army, thankfully came back uh, during the Vietnam uh, crisis, during the Vietnam War. But I remember growing up and thinking, this is what you do when you grow up. You go to Vietnam. How did that, you know, foment, you know, Bobby Kennedy dying, Malcolm X being assassinated, uh, MLK being assassinated, how did all of those things in the women's movement lead to the work this film talks about? Well, it's interesting. We have four subjects, and one of the subjects uh, is a woman who was born a man. She's a, she's, a trans, she's a transgender woman. But when she was a man, she was so unhappy as a man, she said, I'm going to join and go to Vietnam so I will get killed and the pain will end. I mean, that's the most poignant yeah. part of the film. But <laughs> then she says, and I was unloading, I was unloading a truck or something, and she said, oh, no, this is not for me. <laughs> and, she, and then she came home, and, and, and she transitioned. Um, and there's another woman uh, who didn't know she was a lesbian, but she was very involved with the women's movement. And then when Betty Friedan said that we don't want any lesbians in the movement because it gives the other women a bad name, she said we have to form our own movement. So it's all these things that were happening. Another one of the subjects um, is a Hispanic man from Southern California, and he actually marched with Cesar Chavez. So everybody, there was this whole social change that was happening, and everybody came to the same place through different through different channels. Well, you know, channels. You, you, you raise an interesting issue. I mean, we've seen it just in the the first Obama election, where sometimes our political enemies will use other groups mm -hmm. to try to defeat our agenda. For instance, um, the African American civil rights movement wasn't always pro-gay. The women's movement wasn't always pro-gay. Uh, the Hispanic movement. I mean, there were a lot of people who said, "Well, I'm Hispanic, but not gay." How did all this foment actually come to be something that now? all progressive causes seem to be galvanized around. You mean Same today? Second. Yeah, today. Um, it's just a movement whose time has come. And I, if, we, if we ultimately get the funding for the fifth film, which mm -hmm. is what we're hoping to do, um, it will be about the media images, the post-AIDS media frenzy, Ellen DeGeneres, Elton John, um, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what's her name. Yeah, uh, Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, but, but the, the, the singer, the, she was the big one. Mm -hmm. um, the lesbian singer from Canada, whose name escapes me right now. Uh, you know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, uh, Katie Lang. Katie Lang, yeah. I mean, that, all these people came out around the same time. And then you had Will and Grace, and you had all the characters on TV. So people that didn't know gay people had one in their living room every day. And, right. and that changed the, the non-gay perspective, so I think. So the series of films you're doing, yeah. how has it changed your perspective as someone who was a child during the 60s to talk to people who were you know, maybe 10 years older uh, dealing with coming out. What did you learn about your childhood generation from these people who were exploring adulthood? What I find fascinating is the, the first one was about the 50s and it was all about people not knowing that gay people existed. They were the only ones and they kind of secretly had to find one another. The 60s is they found each other and then how did they organize? The 70s is getting political and Harvey Milk and Anita Bryant and all the, these mm -hmm. movements that were happening and then AIDS. Those are the four that are planned within within the organ within the uh, the structure. Um, and each of the, coming out in each of those eras were completely different, but they were so much the same. Right. The issues were the same. The family issues, the self-loathing, which is not as bad as it was today, because you have the support. But back then they didn't have the support. Mm -hmm. 
and the risks were far greater then. Now, the risks today might be there, but they're they're not involving getting killed, losing your job, that kind of a thing. Although in some states you can still but, lose your job for being openly gay. No question, no question. No, and but, I, I think that's a good point to make because, yeah, boy, the 60s, it wasn't so great, but there are still states where you can be fired for just being gay, much less want to get married. And back then, there's nothing you do about it. If you get fired in Texas, move, move to a big city. Yeah. It's that kind of a thing. All right. So now, which of those uh, five films is, would your story be in? What decade did you come out in? I actually am considering being a subject for the 70s because <laughs> my whole thing is when I came out in the 70s, I'm thinking I'm the, uh, that I always had this image of gay men being had overcoats, you know, that mm -hmm. were lonely sitting in the back of a theater luring young boys under their overcoats. I don't know where I got that image, but I had that image. Mm -hmm. And then when I met other gay people, it was like this door opened for me. But it was, the first time you walked into a disco and the disco was the music was yeah. going, it was it was such a liberating. A, it was so liberating, and rather than the '60s, where it might have been scary and self-loathing and that kind of a thing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, the whole disco thing seems to have passed. But I mean, you know, I remember my coming out very uh, vividly. I came out on the dance floor of the frat house in Washington D.C., listening to Diana Ross singing "Upside Down." You know, they turned to me and they said. Uh, What's going on? I said, well, I want to dance. They said, there's only guys here. I'm like, uh, I know, I'm gay. The song's going to end first. Can let's let's get on with right. it. So, well, the important thing part is, of me. Let me tell you, the, the, the inspiration for this came from I was a co-communications director of the, the Quality March on Washington, and the young people that were there were so glad to be part of this movement. But I realized they didn't have it, the context, the, the long-term context. So I went to a friend of mine, Ed Pye who was at the time 92 and came out in the 30s, if he was ever in the closet. He met his lover, he was with his lover for 60 years. And his story, he has so many stories from back then that were never told. And we talked about this and we just, he said that he wants to leave his legacy for him and his partner who had passed away. Right, now, so there is a foundation set up that's actually helping fund these films. Talk a little bit about that in our last few moments, okay. the Pi Project. It's the, the Pi Harris Project, Ed Pi, Bob Harris. Um, they have funded um, Ed's pet projects, which is LGBT issues, environmental issues, and development, developmentally disabled issues. Um, and the first part of it is the, is the LGBT part of it. And he funded two of the films, and we're looking for funding for the other three. Um, that we're the, the more money that we raise, the more money that can go into the other causes that he wants. But, right. but we have the two done. We're going to be filming the two more this summer. Um, the first one was on uh, at the film festival uh, Frameline two years ago and has 40,000 hits on YouTube. It's available wow. on YouTube. And the new one um, has been on, up online for two months. It already has 1,600 hits. So you can see it on YouTube um, if you just if you uh, Google. Google, uh, you know, coming can. out in the 1960s, Great. coming out in the 60s. So hopefully 50s. we'll be here to have you talk about the next few films. Maybe you'll be the star of one of them. From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you so much. We've been speaking to Phil Siegel about his work on coming out in various decades. I'm David Perry. We hope you'll come out every week and watch us on 10%. Thanks for watching.